All right, so let's start talking about the, the next thing that we're gonna do um, the, as we continue work on MP2. So um, I would suggest, now some of you are here because you're kind of working through to summon out the test suites, that's fine. Um, but you know, at some point in order, before you actually start running some of these UI tests for real, please do finish the course model tests, the server tests and the client tests. If those don't work, uh, we're not gonna be able to make much progress here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about kind of one of the more interesting parts of this uh, project. So at this point, we have a model that describes the information about a course that we're going to need to use. We have a server that can provide that information in JSON format for us. And that server could be anywhere on the internet. Right now it lives right alongside the rest of our app, but we could deploy that server on a separate machine and it would work fine. We have a client that knows how to retrieve the information about a course from the server. And now what we wanna do is actually show it to the user. So if you review the demo that we posted at the beginning of this uh, write-up that shows you how a completed MP2 should work, you'll see that when you click on a course, um, in the list, it now loads a page that shows me the title and the description for that course. So it's kind of like a, a page with more detailed information about the client, that course. So at this point, we know how to get that information to the client, but we don't know how to use it. And we don't know how to do things like respond to you know, clicks. Uh, so for example, if I run this right now, let me run the app in the emulator. I'll show you what it does. Um, the uh, you know, I load up, I load the screen with the list of courses on it, that works fine, but if I click on stuff, nothing happens, right? Um, our goal for this part is to fix that, so that when I click on this, I get a page that shows me the title and the description for that course. And there's really two parts of this. So what we're gonna talk about in this uh, walkthrough is just how do I set up a new activity, uh, how do I launch that new activity, and how do I pass information to that new activity so it knows what to do. Um, okay, so the first thing, we want to figure out, like the other parts of this uh, project, let me shut the emulator, um, what we expect you to do is actually understand main activity. This is your chance to understand main activity and show us that you understand a little bit about that by duplicating it, by mimicking it um, in an activity that does slightly different things, but is going to be fairly similar. Unlike the other parts of uh, the project though, main activity is only a kind of a partially good model for what you need to do because main activity does some things that you don't need to do and doesn't do some other things that you do need to do. Um, so it's only really sort of a guide for how to get started. An activity in Android to review, I think we covered this uh, on an earlier checkpoint, but an activity in Android represents a screen. It's something that the user can see. So when I load up uh, the, the emulator, uh, and this is actually still running, I wonder if I can, uh, where did it go? Where did the emulator go? There it is. Um, you know, so this is a screen. Um, it's something the user sees. And you might wonder, how does Android know to start up this activity when the project is launched? And the way it does is it uses this special file called AndroidManifest.xml. This is a file that contains a lot of sort of metadata about the application. So for example, if you need a permission, um, this is where you request that permission. This is a, a piece of this manifest that uh, says that my app requires permission to access the internet. That's so that we can load that information about courses and summaries. Down here, there's a section of the configuration that tells Android when the app starts up, you should start in the main activity. Um, and so that's how this is done. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new activity here and eventually we're gonna to have to modify this. But this is how Android knows when you launch this app, start with the main activity. So how do I create a new activity? Well, on some level, I do the same thing I did when I created a, a new model, right? Which is, first of all, let's go over here to the test suite and we're gonna uncomment um, this code now. Uh, so we'll do this, we'll hit this. Boom, I have an extra brace down here, okay. Um, so now you'll see I have these, um, these uh, compilation errors and that's because I don't have a course activity in my project. Just like I did with the course model, I'm gonna go over here to activities and it's important that I put it in the activities directory. I hit new Java class, I'll call it course activity. Okay, I'm gonna hit add because I want to get to track this file. And then I'm gonna start going over to main activity and I'm gonna pull a few things over here. So um, in order for this to be an Android screen, what I wanna do is I wanna extend this app, this thing called app compat activity. Uh, so I'll just paste that in there. And one of the things I need to do is start to understand some of the code in here. So this method right here called onCreate is what's called when the activity is created. And so my goal here 
is to get to the point where actually, actually I can actually create a course activity when something is clicked. And so that's our goal with this walkthrough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this here and I can actually, I can do it two ways. I could just cut and paste this, but if I go over here and I start clicking on create, it will just kind of do the right thing for me, which is pretty nice. Um, uh, I don't know why it's upset about this. Uh, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I could I just fix this. This is a, just a check style thing. Um, and I'm also going to want to use logging here so I can understand what, to, what what's going on. And so let me go, go grab, where is it? Here it is. Uh, this this tag, and I'll get the the suppressions too. I'm going to put this in here, and I want this to be course activity, uh, not main activity. And then I'm going to put a log message in here, log, and I'll have to import this dot i tag, uh, and I'll say course activity launched. Okay. All right. So now I've created my new activity, but how do I start it? Like, how do I get here? Right? So, so that's the next question. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to try to launch this based on a click in the main activity. Now, if I go back to my main activity and I scroll down here, I'll see that I have this method here called on course clicked. Let's put a uh, log method method in here. Uh, I'll say on course clicked. Uh, I have to import logging again. That's good. And now let me rerun the app. I'm going to open up my logs and I'm going to check to see what happened because what I want is I want to make sure that this message is being printed when I click on the courses that are listed in the UI. I'm pretty sure that's actually the case, but, um, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll double check just to be sure. Um, after we get that to work. Okay. So let's try this click, click. Okay, cool. So I see on course clicked. Now what I want to do is figure out how do I tie that into launching this new activity? Okay, so if I Google uh, start another activity, which is what I did, uh, and I find myself on this um, Android documentation. Android actually has fantastic documentation. There are millions of Android developers all over the world. Most of them are probably not as smart as you are. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of great documentation out there and you can find out how to do a lot of really cool things in Android by Googling and browsing through their examples. They have, they have really good examples. So here's an example um, showing us a little bit about, and you have to read the text and stuff like that, but it shows us a little bit about how to start an activity. And in Android, the way we do this is by creating something called an intent. An intent is an object in Android that essentially, uh, you know, represents the intent to start a new activity. So it's the thing that launches a new screen. And so you can see a little bit of an example about how to do this. So I could cut and paste this, or I could just, you know, uh, mimic this here. So let me go back, sorry, let me go back to my main activity. I'm going to work down here in this course click method because what I want to do is I actually want to uh, launch the new course activity that I just created. So let's say new, we'll say intent, course intent, the new intent. And then if I go to the documentation, uh, I pass something called a context and I can just use this for that. Uh, oh, I need to import it. So I go here. There we go. I pass a context holder, which I can just use this object, and then I pass the class, and this is the syntax for doing that. Um, uh, I think it's the syntax. No, no, I was so close. All right, there we go. So let's see if this works, right? Oh, and then there's something else I need to do. I need to do a start activity and then pass the intent, right? So that's the other thing. So I call start activity, uh, it's down here and I pass the course intent that I just created. So these two things together should now mean that when I click on a course, this new activity launches. So let's see if it works. Uh, let's rerun, rerun the app um, and we'll try it. So this is the first thing I need to do. And the next thing I'm gonna talk about is figuring out how to get some information to this new activity. But let's actually make sure that we can get the new activity started first. Okay, uh, so it's loading, it's doing the usual thing blah, blah, blah. It's going to show me a list of courses. Now I click on one of them and now, uh oh, I have a, a crash. My app actually failed. And I see down here in the logs what went wrong. And this is actually a really useful error message. So it says, have you declared this activity in your Android manifest.xml? And in Android, when I create activities, all the screens that a user might visit in my app, I need to declare them inside the Android manifest. 
And this is actually really easy to do. So let's just do this. Uh, it's going to help me. Um, and it actually it gives some suggestions here, right? And that's all I need to do. I just need to tell Android that I'm going to use this particular activity, that it's a part of my application. Now you'll see um, this syntax, you'll see like, why doesn't it look like this? It, th th these are the same, right? I can replace this with this, or I could replace uh, the, the longer version. This path is just relative to the package name of, of my entire application. So those, the, these things basically do the same thing. Okay, so let's try it again. Rerun the app. Now I've made this change to my manifest and you'll need to make this change too to make sure that Android knows um, you know, how to, that, that this activity is part of your application and is a valid thing to be launched. Um, okay, so now I've got this, click on that. And okay, I'm now, now look in the logs, I see course activity launched. So I actually got into this code, which is awesome. Okay, now it's blank right now, which isn't super exciting. If you hit back, you will actually be able to get back to the list. And so I could click on another course and you can see that I'm back in this blank activity. And so, you know, so, but I, I've accomplished one of the things I wanted to do, which is that I have this course activity launched. Now, if you're trying to get to the point where you can submit and have your code graded on our server, you should essentially be there at this point. So remember before when I was working with this, I had to comment out this import. If I return this import back into the project, um, now you'll see, okay, well, it's, it's angry about that. That's okay. Um, let's try running the entire test suite and see what happens, okay? Um, because some of you, you know, you know, we need to go through some of these steps together before you can get anything. Uh, before you can get official points with our remote grader, your code has to be able to compile and run with all of the test suites um, commented, uncommented, right? And now you'll see that, you know, these integration tests are all crashing, which is okay, uh, because we haven't done the work required to complete them. There's only one test that's actually uh, passing, which is the one that we pulled over from uh, the previous checkpoint, um, but everything else is failing, that's fine. But we're at the point now where we're actually now using the same test suites that we would use remotely. And so you could submit this and you know you would get like 10 points or, or 20 points if you fix all the text developers. Okay, now let's go back to our course activity. Because the next thing we need to do, so, this, so the idea here is that the screen displays information about a specific course. But how do I know which course to display? And so let's go back to main activity. And you'll see that there's actually a summary that's passed to on course clicked. So I know which course was clicked on. And I need to somehow pass this information to course activity so that when course activity starts up, it can do the right thing. It can retrieve information for that course. The way I do this, I'm going to go back and I'm going to review the documentation is I use this idea of what's called an intent extra. So when I create an intent, I can add extra information to that intent that is available to the activity when it starts up. Okay. So I want to show you how to do that. Um, this is a place where you have to do this properly, otherwise the test suites won't work. So if you look at our test suites, what we do is we add extra information under the key course. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to manactivity.java and I'm going to say uh, course intent dot add. Uh, sorry, it's called add extra, what is it called? Extra, put extra, there we go. Um, I'm going to use the key course because that's important. If you don't use that, stuff will break. And I'll put like a value testing or something like this, right? I just want to show you how you can pass a string. It has to be a string. Other types of things won't work. You can pass a string to uh, this new activity. And then in the course activity, what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to retrieve this. Uh, and so let's go back to our documentation because I think this will this will help us. Uh, learn how to do this. Let's see here on the second activity, blah, blah, blah. It says, it says in, cre in on create, right? I can use this method, get intent to retrieve the message. So let's do this. Uh, let's go over to uh, course activity. And again, I'm just, you know, mimicking stuff that's available on the public Android documentation, which is always okay uh, for you to do. I need to import this. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll say, uh, I'll call this course and the, the key that we've agreed on here is course. And let's just do log.i, uh, let's just log this so that we can see what happens. This should just be testing right now. Um, okay, so I'm gonna rerun my, oh, sorry, I don't wanna run the test suites, stop. Uh, let me rerun the app. 
uh, because I want to make sure now that this extra piece of information that I've added to the intent is properly being communicated to the new activity. So you might start to think about, okay, um, how can I pass information to this new, um, you know, this, this new activity? So if I click on software design studio, oh, I've got to fix my logging here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, using this guy. Okay, go back. Uh, hit computer architecture. Oh, something weird is happening. I think it's restarting. Yeah, I think it took an extra minute. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes it starts to run like an old version of the app and um, it's taking a minute to catch up here. Okay, so we'll give it a second. I should have no idea what's going on now. See, you guys, you guys thought I knew how to do this stuff. <laughs> Wrong you were. Let's try it again. Uh, let's give this another chance to start. Okay, there we go. Uh, that's good. There we go. Let's click on this, what happens? Okay, and we see testing, right? So we see course activity launch, and then we see testing. Um, now, in order to pass the test suites, what you're gonna have to put in here is a serialized summary. So you're gonna have to take that summary that's passed to on course clicked, serialize it to JSON, which you probably are gonna need to use Jackson to help with, and then pass it uh, as a string. This is another use for JSON. In your course activity, you'll take that string, deserialize it into a summary, and that's how you'll call get course. Now, another thing that you want to mimic from main activity. So you see when main activity starts up in, let me close my, uh, close my emulator again, in on create, it makes a call to get summary. You're going to do something similar in your course activity, except rather than getting a summary, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a course. This is where you're gonna use that get course method that you added to client. So I'll put something in here. I'm gonna say um, to do uh, use, use get course to retrieve information about the, the course passed in the intent. So essentially you're going to, you know, again, use the, um, you're gonna be pass this information in the intent, you're gonna retrieve it, and then you're going to use that information to retrieve uh, the full course information by calling get course. Like we did with main activity, that's going to require registering a callback. You could use this object as a callback, in which case you'll have to implement the, um, the course response method, which will allow you to retrieve the response from the server. So again, the model to follow here is main activity .job, uh, little bits and pieces of it. Um, but this is, so at this point, we, we have the two things done that we really were, well, I wanted to focus on this. The first is we have a way to create, uh, we've created this new activity, course activity .job. And we have a way to launch it from main activity. Um, so, and it's launched in the right place. So this is the right place where main activity should launch course activity is when you click on one of the courses in the list. Okay, so what's left for you to do here? Uh, there are a couple things that are, uh, still not done. I'll just put some notes in here, right? Uh, so one thing is we need to serialize course to pass through the intent. So essentially, rather than passing the string testing, I need to take this course summary and serialize it using Jackson so that I can pass it in the intent. When I go over to course activity, that string that's passed in this course key will now contain a serialized summary. I want to deserialize it back into an actual summary object and then use that to call get course, right? And there I can just sort of follow the pattern that I'm using here, right? And I'll, you know, we could just do this together. This is this is straightforward, right? So um, now instead of calling get court, get summary, I'm going to call get course and I'm going to have to pass some additional information, right? Which is I'll, I'll have to pass the course. Now that's not going to work yet because course is a string and I need to figure out a way to get a summary object out of that string that was passed in the intent. I also need, I'm going to need to implement uh, this course client callbacks, uh, course client callbacks, right? Um, and why is it angry here? Uh, oh, extends and then uh, implements. Yeah. Okay, there we go. And then uh, I need to do something on, uh, is it called get course? 
uh, what is this called and get summary. Uh, course response, there we go. So I'm gonna provide an implement, implementation for course response and then again, I need to do something with this. And this is these are just sort of silly check style errors that I can get rid of fairly easily. Um, so this is the template now for, for course activity. And there's still plenty for you to do here. Um, in the next walkthrough, what I'm going to do is we'll talk about layout, right? So there's kind of two parts to the challenge of getting this activity to work. One is getting it started properly and getting the data that it needs available to it. And we've taken a step in that direction with this walkthrough. However, even once you have that data, you still need to figure out a way to get it onto the, the display. We don't have too many rules about that. As long as you display the title and the description, you should be able to pass the tests. But we'll talk a little bit about one approach to be able to display that data in the next walkthrough.